think the daily life of a tuna out in the blue is pretty rock and roll. It's a jungle out there, the blue jungle. Your entire life is about finding that next meal and at the same time not getting eaten by everything else that's trying to find its next meal. The benefits of our tuna fisheries to our region is so significant. It is a key driver for economic development. It provides more than 550 million US dollars per annum to our island economies. About 80% of government revenue is, from, is contributed from the tuna fishery or the licenses that we get from the access fees for the, the tuna, um, for tuna fishing and this is over 20% of the world's exclusive economic zones. It is also the best managed fishery in the world and uh, all four major tuna species are biologically healthy. The focus of our work is to ensure that we maintain that. You know, in some cases it can contribute 95% of their government income that pays for hospitals, that pays for schools, that pays for roads. Obviously climate change is a major problem for us. The issue of sea level rise and maritime boundaries is a critical one for the Pacific to address. These are countries that are going to be deeply affected by climate change, not just sea level rise, their countries literally disappearing, but also potential changes in the, in the distribution of that incredibly important fish stocks that they rely on. Ocean science is so important to our tuna fisheries management work because it provides the assessment of the status of stocks, its impact uh, of tuna fishing on the ecosystem, the impact of climate change on the ecosystem. So most notably after 2050, an eastward shift of our tuna stocks. And that is something that we need to understand really well so that we can respond and adapt our fisheries management frameworks appropriately. It's a small electronic device. It's about the size of an, a AA battery um, that's surgically implanted inside the fish. Uh, fish is caught, brought on board, the surgery is carried out very quickly and then that fish is returned to the water. And in essence, that fish is turned into some kind of um, monitoring device, some living monitoring device um, that tells us what's going on. And it's collecting a whole range of information on the oceanographic environment that the fish lives in. And we can start to use that information to predict and forecast where the fish will be in the future. We are able to identify what stresses or changes are affecting tuna behaviour and changes in stock status over time whether that might be because of the physical environment or anthropogenic influences such as marine pollution or if it's directly related to fishing activities. All other countries that are dependent on tuna, we depend so much on the best available science that is provided um, to us for decision making. Here in the Pacific we are fortunate to have the Oceanic Fisheries Program within SPC that has a team of world-class fisheries scientists who are responsible for producing uh, the stock assessments, ecosystem monitoring and who undertake different analyses and research to give us sound scientific advice to manage tuna fisheries here in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean. And ultimately all of this leads towards ensuring our people have the best advice, the best support with this valuable resource so that we can maximize both our economic and our social returns, our benefits from this resource.